Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 3 of season 3 of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory career mode where today we're here at the Chinese Grand Prix. Obviously if you missed out on the last one I would highly okay. highly recommend going back and checking it out. From the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. So coming into this Chinese Grand Prix then we do have even more good news from the team. More and more upgrades are getting piled onto the car and obviously that is absolutely perfect. As I said, if you did miss out the Bahrain Grand Prix or the Australian Grand Prix, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking them out. Very, very interesting races, both very different races on the whole. But yeah, still very, very interesting as well. In terms of moving on the into this weekend, then we do have the energy recovery system, the energy stall cells upgrade completed. Obviously, we now, well, we did have the best chassis and best aero coming into this weekend. I think both Mercedes, sorry, all three Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull have all re-jumped us in terms of the chassis department coming into this one. Coming into this one, but, you know, we're still right there. As well as the fact, obviously, we've got another engine upgrade going on the car, hopefully, uh, by uh, Spain. That upgrade will be on the car as well. And if we have a look uh, overall, you can see we do still have the strongest car on the grid. And obviously, we're trying to just make it, you know, comfortably stronger than everyone else. We are aiming to win both the Drivers' and Constructors' World Championship this season. So, obviously, we do need Lance Stroll to sort of pull his weight as well in that sense. It's all well and good that I do very, very well. But, obviously, you, there's no I in team and you can't win a Constructors World Championship all by yourself. But yeah, moving out of free practice, then obviously a fairly simple showing as you'd expect now, you know, season three. We're already fully into a rhythm with all of that, and you know, we are going to be able to take them quite a few R&D points from that session. I think it was just over 200 ticks, up to 420 points overall, which is obviously really, really ideal as we come into this Chinese Grand Prix weekend, because obviously really this season, obviously it's a little bit early to be talking about strategy overall. But, you know, we are going to focus on this year. Obviously, if rule changes come in ready for Season 4, we're probably not going to worry about that. We're just going to focus on it wrapping up this world title. As obviously, if well, if we're in a situation to do that, then we will probably move teams for Season 4 as well. But, yeah, let's move on then into the Chinese Grand Prix, as you can just quickly see there as well. But, you know, we haven't quite got the best chassis on the grid anymore. But, yeah, as I said, let's move on then into the Chinese Grand Prix. Ever since the salver of Felipe Massa passed Jensen Button into Turn 1 at the very first Chinese Grand Prix in 2004, Shanghai has consistently provided close racing and extraordinary memories. It's where Lewis Hamilton effectively lost the title in his rookie year, and it's where Nico Rosberg claimed Mercedes' first win of the modern era in 2012. We start a lap here at Shanghai with the long, difficult right-handers of turns one and two, the first of 16 corners that make up this 3.3-mile circuit. The incredibly long back straight provides the best passing opportunity of the lap, with speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour before the braking zone of turn 14. Joining me once again to take you through this race is the effervescent Anthony Davidson, and I'm very much looking forward to it getting underway. You raced here, of course, didn't you, back in your Super Aguri days in that infamous Chinese Grand Prix of 2007? Yeah, that's right. I didn't last that long, though, unfortunately. Uh, qualifying had gone pretty well, but my brakes failed quite early in the race, around lap 10 or 11, something like that. And, of course, back in 2004, I was the very first Formula 1 driver to complete a lap of this circuit. Just thought I'd mention that for you, Crofty, like a good stat. Uh, it's a fairly tough circuit on the brakes here, though. You know, it's that long back straight down into turn 14, and then you've got turn 6 and 11. They're quite heavy as well. On top of that, managing your front tyre wear is always a challenge around here, so there's a lot to keep in mind during the Grand Prix. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, the Professor, Max Verstappen, and Bottas, Raikkonen, Stroll, Hülkenberg, and Carlos Sainz, Perez, Ocon, Kevin Magnussen, and Leclerc, Alonso, Van Dorn, Roman Grosjean and Marcus Ericsson. Gasly and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Great starting position for us. Let's see if we can improve on that in the race. So here we are then. The team are very, very happy with our grid start for the Chinese Grand Prix here. Starting P4, the AI tend to be very, very buggy with their ridiculously fast laps in qualifying nowadays. So it's a little bit unfortunate 
that that does occur. Yeah, ready then for the Chinese Grand Prix. It's four cars from four different teams make up the first four slots, but it is five lights here in Shanghai, and it's lights out and away we go there, and actually got for the first time in a long time, a decent start here into World Stale Moment. We're going to be able to look past Ricardo, maybe up the inside of a Lewis Hamilton. They don't want to get pinched on the inside, but after, oh, after having to slow down a little bit early, we are able to get up the inside of the pair of them. Lewis does give me the room on the inside. They're almost a bit like a torpedo, a torpedo, sorry, from myself there. But we do move up into P2 of the Grand Prix, so that's been a really, really good start for myself. And now we're all over the back of Sebastian Vettel here. We just need to try and keep with him, obviously, like we saw in Australia. He's just absolutely able to run away with it in the early stages of these races. But obviously, for myself, you know, we're aiming just to be able to keep up with him off the start of this race here. And by the end, though, of lap three, we had the slipstream, we had the DRS, we had the ERS, we had the rich revs, absolutely everything on this car. 220 miles an hour. They're almost 224 miles an hour as we go in towards the hairpin there. But unfortunately, just cannot get the car slowed down. And that was a clear indicator that we already needed to make my first pit stop of the day here. On, on, only on lap three here. And I think flashbacks from AOR a couple of days back were really sort of in the back of my mind. As well here as well, you know, we didn't really want to try and take the tyres all too far. They're just going to get the car slowed down just before the marks as well. So we're in for a very, very early pit stop here. I think one Mercedes, one Ferrari, um, one Red Bull and one Renault have all followed me in there as well. So everyone not really willing to risk taking those option stops too far in this Grand Prix. And honestly, they're basically pointless around this Shanghai circuit. You know, you basically want to use them for quality and get off them as quickly as possible there. But yeah, on to lap four then. Obviously, we do come out the pit lane all the way down in P16 here, but obviously a lot more drivers will be having to make their opening pit stop off the race very, very quickly after that. Just one lap later here by the end of lap four, and it was quite clear that basically everyone was really, really struggling with those tyres. I was pushing quite a lot, as you can probably tell coming out of the final corner there. But we do now move back up into P11 there, but we've been able to make the undercut work on Seb. But Valtteri Bottas has made the overcut work on pretty much everyone else. So what a fantastic job that is by him, effectively not up into what is a net P2 of this Grand Prix. It sort of depends on what the rest of the field do here. And this is what I meant by the rest of the field. Obviously, we had all the guys starting outside the top 10 that would now be able to make the one-stop work really, really easily here. So effectively, we were fighting them for position, obviously, but we would have a slightly quicker race strategy between now and the end, but obviously it's all the drivers like the Torosas, the Salvas, the Force Indias, the Haskars, I think even Fernando Alonso as well. But unfortunately, we've had a DRS failure there, and honestly, that's probably not going to cost me too much against these guys, because I, I don't think it's really going to be too much of a hindrance for me. I think it's just going to give them a chance down the straights on the whole, because, well, this Williams is honestly a bit of a missile down the straights. Now, 200 miles an hour before we even reach the DRS zone there. Gonna fly past Pierre Gasly. Probably not the best comparison to do. Obviously, he's, he's well, he's in the by far and away the weakest car on the grid there. But all over the back now of Ericsson and Roman Grosjean as well as we come out the final corner. I think in qualifying we were hitting 200 miles an hour before turn one, which is just a bit crazy on the whole. You know, it's just stupid how quick this car is down the streets. There are 190, 200 miles an hour there, 206 miles an hour as we come in towards turn one. That's a little bit crazy on the hull. We will go for a bit of a lunge down the inside of Ericsson there. It's going to be a bit of a robust move from myself. He does still try to turn him, but, you know, we hold on on the inside there. And that is absolutely perfect for myself. Charles Leclerc now with issues as well in this Grand Prix, so certainly not ideal for him. But on to lap 10, then, we are all over the back now of the Haas car of Roman Grosjean as well here. Obviously, Haas have just really had a full front race in this career. But they've just gone further and further down the order over the last couple of seasons, which is obviously really, really sad for the American team. Almost doing what we see from other new teams in Formula 1 there. But yeah, we're going to move to the outside of the Haskell there. 212 miles an hour, 212. What a brilliant speed that is to be stuck at as we come down the back straight. We now move up into P6 of the Grand Prix. One lap later here, we have Charles Leclerc and K-Mag also having a bit of a ding-dong as we come out onto the back straight here. And while well, Charles Leclerc, you can really see how many issues he has got in that Salva car. He's got the slipstream of k -Mag, those who will have a little bit to defend it down the straights here, but still nothing he can really do against this Williams there. Into the slipstream of k -Mag as well. We're going to have a look to the outside, but he squeezes me out over the curbs. Lucky I was actually able to get the car slowed down in time there, but we do get tremendous drive off the exit of the corner there. We'll be the inside in towards the final corner. No way you really want to go two by two, and we do then move up into P4 of this Grand Prix, so we are really just slicing our way through these slower cars at this stage of the day. Now, what a race so far it has been for myself. Quite a bit of action, but we've mainly been moving forward. 
And obviously that is exactly what we want to see on the hole here. One lap later, you see Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon both now diving into the pit lane for their one and only stop of the race. So clearly the AI not able to take the uh, softs quite to halfway, but still very, very close on the hole as we now set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as well here. And one lap later, I think it will be Sergio Perez diving it in for his one and only pit stop of the day as well. But yeah, at this point of the race, we were sort of trying to think about my own strategy here because, you know, Perez, we are definitely going to have the pit again in this race. We're not going to be able to make the one stop work like we've seen in a couple of other rounds so far this season. But Perez, that would mean he'd still have quite a big undercut on myself effectively in this race as well here. So we're sort of trying to work out the gamble between, you know, when we pit whether we pit too early and just try to focus on, you know, having those soft tyres to really attack Perez, try and make sure he can't utilise the undercut all too well, or whether we, you know, try and make sure that we've got a bit of tyre life towards the end of the race as well here, because Perez will obviously be on a set of the medium compound tyres, which really the pace deficit isn't actually that bad around this circuit either as well. So strategy really sort of coming into this uh, Chinese Grand Prix as well here, and by lap 17 I decided this would probably be the best time to dive it in for my second and hopefully final pit stop of the day. Fernando Alonso, 26 seconds behind me. We should come out ahead of him, but I think we are not going to come out ahead, though, of Sergio Perez. So clearly the Force India, although starting outside the top 10, does still have some very, very strong race pace here around this Chinese Grand Prix here. So coming out down in towards the pit lane, 50 miles an hour, get the car slowed down nicely on the anchors there. Perez now just coming in towards the final corner of the lap. A good, solid two-second pit stop there. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the car in gear at just the right time there, so we have cost ourselves about an extra half a second there, but Perez is going to be comfortably out ahead of me there. Into the race lead of this Grand Prix once more here, and now we've got ten laps to go to try and hunt the Force India car back down here. You think he's got about a three or four second gap to me as we came back out of the pit lane here, but now it's just a case of trying to bring our Williams car, you know, it's a far superior car here, back up towards the rear of the Force India, and on to the end of lap 19, the start of lap 20, and that was really what we were doing, able to push this car to the absolute limit, we were cutting it a little bit tight, uh, in terms of the final corner track limits as well, as the tyre temps as well, the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, we're going to move to the outside there, Sergio is going to give me a big, big squeeze, as we go in towards turn one, we're going to try and keep it on the outside, but with the grass on those tyres there, unfortunately get caught out over the grass there, that was really, really unfortunate, for myself that's going to leave us further back behind the Force India car once more here there and that's going to mean that's really really frustrating though. Sergio clearly wants this race victory here he's willing to put the car on the line to try and defend this one I don't think Force India have been able to take home a win in this career mode so far I think they've come very very close in a couple of occasions but yeah still not able if I'm not mistaken to come through for a win yet here at this series there but on to that 22 we were now all over the rear of the Force India car once more here. Slipstream, ERS, DRS, absolutely everything there. 215, 220 miles an hour as we come in towards turn one there. Absolutely nothing Sergio is going to be able to do. But we cannot get the car slowed down in time there. And that's just going to be, once again, an open door for the Force India there. Really, really unfortunately, they're just making these small little mistakes that are really just keeping Perez in front and keeping him with that tyre advantage that will obviously move his way towards the end of this race. It's really... Really frustrating here. Once again to the outside as we come in towards turn one here. We have got the car fully on side him there. But as we go right around the outside, we just dip the wheel on the grass there. And that was a really, really infuriating amateur mistake from myself. We just couldn't get the, well, couldn't keep the rear end just off the grass there. And unfortunately with that one, we've cost ourselves a good sort of three or four seconds here. And unfortunately with that as well, the tyres are now really, really close to overheating. I think we've got about a degree left in them before they get to the 105 and just basically die on you as well, which is really, really frustrating on the whole there. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to really sort of tie manage towards the end of this race now with Sergio having that tyre advantage, you know, the way those mediums really come into their own towards the end of the Grand Prix. We were really, really struggling to try and catch up that gap right towards the very end of the race. Sergio Perez, though, was very aggressive, but I'd say... I'd say on the on the line, on the fairer side of the line there. I think, you know, he clearly wanted this win. And as we come into the final lap, it looks like he's going to be able to claim it as well. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting to see the AI going for quite aggressive defensive manoeuvres. And honestly, for me, I'm not too worried about that as well. You know, my big rivals are sort of Danny Rick, the Ferraris and the Mercedes, and obviously Verstappen in this series, obviously. So to be able to outscore those guys as well, still, you know, I'm not really going to try and risk overheating the tyres to try and claim an extra couple of points here in the Chinese Grand Prix. But yeah, oh, there we go then. 
out onto the back straight here on the final lap. We are still closing up to the rear of Sergio Perez, but I think it's going to be a too little, too late here. Sergio, as I say, clearly wanted it more. Clearly, he's wanted to put the karma on the line than myself. You know, he's really, really just struggling to, you know, I think, you know, he hasn't quite had the car this season, so I think when he's got the opportunity, he's really, really pounced upon it. But through the final corner, then, it's going to be Sergio Perez to take home the Chinese Grand Prix victory. We're going to come through for P2. They're a little bit sad with that one, but I think, honestly, for the long run for the championship, we probably made the right decision then not to risk the car towards the end of that race. stuff from Force India today. What a superb victory. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones, and ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well, though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? I can see them on their way out to the podium now. Force India have really come a long, long way in this sport. And what a special race this was to see them earn that top spot. So there we are then guys, the end of the Chinese Grand Prix in a very, very interesting race on the whole. There. Sergio Perez able to take home the race victory just half a second ahead of myself. Lewis Hamilton would actually sneak past Alonso right at the very end as well, down the back straight of the final lap to claim the final podium slot as well. There with Fernando Alonso fourth, as I said, the Ferrari's fifth and sixth, K Mag in seventh. Daniel Ricciardo eighth, my teammate Lance Stroll down in P9, but not a particularly good result for him, but considering you know, on that strategy, he was still with the Red Bulls there, showing he's not too bad so far. There with Max Verstappen rounding out the point scorers there. Grosjean just missed that head of Valtteri Bottas having a very, very poor day out. Hulkenberg, Ocon, Van Dorn, Pierre Gasly, Charles Leclerc, Ericsson, Hartley and Carlos Sainz would not make it through to the end of the Grand Prix there. Which means that for the first time, I think, in this series, three different Mercedes-powered cars would make up the podium. I don't think we've had that from any sort of engine supplier yet in this series. I think the only other one that could would be Ferrari as well. But in terms of the constructors' standings, we now further extend our lead at the top 28 points now as Sergio Perez goes back up to P2. So I said oh, he wasn't really a title rival. Clearly, he's proving himself as my strongest com competition so far in this series, obviously, after two podiums so far. Obviously, third place in Australia and then the win here in Shanghai. He jumps Danny Rick there. Seb holds on to P4. Max Verstappen drops all the way down to P5. With Kimi Räikkönen, uh, sorry, Lewis Hamilton jumping Bottas and Ocon. Alonso jumping my teammate Lance Stroll with K-Mag jumping Ericsson, Charles Leclerc and Hulkenberg. Grosjean jumps, uh, sorry, Ericsson. Pierre Gasly holds on to P18 and Van Dorn jumps Brendan Hartley there. And the constructors, we now lead the way ahead of Red Bull. Force India jump Ferrari. Mercedes, one of the only teams to hold level. McLaren jump Renault. Haas jump Sauber and Toro Rosso sit now at the bottom with nil points overall but yeah hopefully you know you guys have enjoyed this video make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here we're trying to hit 10k subs on the channel at the moment if you want to go check out my league racing channel click on the orange link if you want to go check out my forza horizon 4 channel click on the green link on your screens but hopefully i'll see you guys next time for the azerbaijan grand prix